Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. This year for Laptop Reviews, I want to focus on good values, and I think I found a good one to start the year off here with. This is the Asus VivoBook S, and at the moment, this is selling for $799 over at Walmart. And what I like about this machine is what they're packing in for that price. So this one has a Core Ultra 7 processor, a 258V. That is one of the newer Lunar Lake chips with eight cores. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM on board. It is soldered on, but at least you've got 32 gigs of it. You don't typically see that at this price point. Additionally, it has one terabyte of storage along with Wi-Fi 7. So this is a very nicely equipped laptop. It even has an OLED display, and I think it's a good value for the price point. We're gonna get into this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Asus is letting us hang on to this one for a while and eventually we'll be giving it away. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, as I mentioned, this is currently selling for $799 over at Walmart. The only difference between that one and this one is that it has a black case versus the silver one. There's also a version at Best Buy running with the Core Ultra 5 version of that Lunar Lake processor with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. That's selling for only $649 over there at Best Buy. Very good price, I think, for what you get on this particular computer. Now, as I mentioned, these have OLED displays. They're running at 600 nits of brightness, 14 inches here, 16 by 10 aspect ratio and it has a 60 hertz refresh rate. It does support 100% of sRGB, so I think it's suitable for doing some light creative work. It's not a touch display though, and it is a bit reflective because it's a very glossy display, but it does run flat to the surface here. And I forgot to mention it is running at a 1920 by 1200 resolution at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So it's about a 1080p class display which doesn't look bad on a 14 inch laptop like this one. And overall, I found it to be a much better looking display than you typically see at this price point with an LED option. So very nice display on this one and everything looks quite nice on it. We'll look at some video editing in a little bit. The keyboard and trackpad are also quite nice on here. This is a backlit keyboard. It's got that typical Asus key layout, but these are nice, large, well-spaced keys, very easy to type on and you've got a good amount of key travel here too. I was very happy to see how nice this keyboard was to type on. The trackpad isn't bad either. It is a click pad and you can click almost to the top of it actually. So very nice range of uh, click clickability here if you will. And I found it to be very easy to work with although it is a little bit springier than I like typically but overall you could easily get used to this especially for the price point. The weight on this one comes in at 2.87 pounds, just under three pounds, all aluminum, very lightweight aluminum, and that is about 1.3 kilograms. It's also very well balanced too. So if you have the display closed, you can lift it up with one finger here and get your computer back up and running again. It also supports the Windows Hello features from the webcam so you can get in without a password. And speaking of the webcam, it runs at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Looks pretty good here, nice and sharp. You do have some of the Microsoft Copilot features that you can integrate into it to enhance the image or put up some background blur. You also have a manual shutter here at the top. Now you also have a pretty good port selection on this one. Let's start on the left-hand side of the unit where we've got a full-size HDMI output along with two full-service Thunderbolt 4 ports. I would have liked to have seen Thunderbolt 5 given that it's available now, but uh, Thunderbolt 4 is still no slouch. And these, of course, can do power in, video out, along with Thunderbolt and USB data devices. You have a micro SD card slot here, which will run flush to the unit, so you can have some augmented storage on board, along with your headphone microphone jack over there. And then on the other side, you have two full-size USB-A ports. These are running at five gigabits per second each, but certainly suitable for USB devices like game controllers and external storage and keyboards and whatnot that you might plug into it. So all in a pretty nice port selection on this laptop. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with some basics here, some web browsing and take it from there. So we'll load up my Brave browser here and go to the nasa.gov homepage. 
I have a Wi-Fi 6 network here, and as you can see, things are super quick as you would expect them to be on a higher-end Intel processor here. So no issues doing the basics. There is a Wi-Fi 7 radio on here, which will get you slightly better performance for high-speed downloads and whatnot if you do have a Wi-Fi 7 access point. But no matter which Wi-Fi you have, I think web browsing on this device will be quite good. And video playback looks quite nice on this. I've got currently a 4K 60 frames per second YouTube video playing back. Of course, this display is only 1920 by 1200, so we are down converting a bit, but it looks great on the OLED display. I'm getting a drop frame every once in a while. This is a 60 frames per second video, but nothing noticeable. And I think it might just be due to things having to settle down first before playback began. So I don't think you'll have any issues playing back video content from YouTube or other video providers. The laptop does support HDR inside of the Windows settings, but it doesn't look like it supports Dolby Vision or any of the higher end HDR modes. But either way here, the OLED display looks great for video playback. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 26.8. That puts this laptop in very close with its peers currently in the marketplace insofar as web browsing performance is concerned. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, if you keep the display brightness at a reasonable level, about 80% or so, and stick to basic tasks like word processing, web browsing, and video watching, you should be able to get 10 to 12 hours out of this. I was very pleased with the battery life. You could probably squeeze it even further if you keep the brightness down and really stick to the basics, but all in, for an Intel-based laptop here, battery life is quite good. So let's take a look at a little video editing now. I've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up with a couple of 4K 60 frames per second video clips that I want to mash up here. And what I'm going to do is go over to our transitions and drop in a cross dissolve here. And let's see how quickly everything renders in. So we got that place. We'll hit the space bar. And look at that. Very, very smooth here. And these Intel chips have some decent graphics performance, especially for this kind of light video editing. So if you are looking to do the kind of video that you're watching currently on this YouTube video, I think you will have very good results here. It's a nice little video editing device, even for 4K 60 content. And of course, these Intel chips have some very nice encoders built in for quick exports too. So let's take a look now at some gaming. And I've got Red Dead Redemption 2 running on this right now. And we're at the native resolution of the display, 1920 by 1200. And we are running at the lowest settings. And we're getting about 45 to 55 frames per second, even in complex environments. So very good gaming performance here. Very similar to some degree what we saw on the last generation of these Intel chips from a graphical perspective. But these new chips do have a little more horsepower on the CPU side. But overall here, I think you can get away with some pretty good casual gaming. There are some games that won't run all that well, so some of the really demanding ones, like Starfield, for example, will struggle here, but there's a very large library of games that are not all that old that this can run quite well. So great for casual gamers, and if you've got one of those Game Pass accounts, you have plenty that you can install on here. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 4,385. Graphically, this is very close to the prior generation chips, a little bit of a bump in performance there, and all in very good casual game performance, as you saw. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 99%, which indicates that this computer will remain very stable in its performance, even under heavy sustained load. And the fan noise is relatively quiet, even though we're not dealing with a very big laptop here. So you will hear that fan kick on, but it's a very subdued noise. It's not the wind tunnel that you typically will hear with a gaming laptop. All right, one last thing to check out here, and that is its Linux performance. We've got Ubuntu 24.10 booted up here. And so far, so good. Audio works, the Wi-Fi is working, the display is proper, and it feels like a pretty decent Linux experience. There are a couple of little quirky things that I noticed here, and this might just be due to how new this chipset is versus the version of Linux that I'm running. But the Wi-Fi says it's currently disabled, but it is, in fact, working when I click on uh, websites here in the web browser. But everything else seems to be running just fine. I do think Linux will be a good option on this laptop in the near future once some new drivers get pushed down and all in. If you are looking to do more than just Windows on here, you can definitely do it with some great performance. So all in, I think this is a great value, especially at the sale price I'm currently seeing it at. 
Now on the Core Ultra 5 one that was over at Best Buy, I think the day-to-day -day tasks on here will feel very similar, but you will see perhaps slightly less performance for gaming and video editing and that sort of thing. But for most casual use, it's not gonna be a huge difference. But if you're looking for something that has a decent Intel processor and 32 gigs of RAM and an OLED, I think this is a pretty good deal. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.